In today's video, I'm gonna tell you nautical terms that every cruise passenger must know. So let's go. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from the beautiful Caribbean princess here. Early, early morning. I think you might be able to see the moon over my head here. The sun is rising. We're gonna get some great shots today. But what I wanna to talk to you about is some nautical terms I think every cruise passenger must know. I say that kind of tongue in cheek. You don't have to know these terms, but they're fun to know. You can impress your friends or better yet, uh, you can annoy them, which I think is more fun anyway with your nautical term knowledge. What qualifies me to talk about this stuff? Well, if you're just joining my channel, I spent 20 years in the US Navy. So I learned a few nautical terms along the way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about some nautical terms. First, we're gonna go below decks and I'm gonna tell you about one of my favorite nautical terms, so let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start off with one of my favorite nautical terms. It's for all this stuff over here, right? Normally you would call this candy, chips, crackers, all that kind of stuff. Well, the nautical term for this stuff is gidunk. Gidunk refers to any ice cream, candy, chips, any kind of snacks you would get. If you have a vending machine on board, they call that the gidunk machine. A lot of people say it comes from the sound that the vended item makes, gadunk, but that's not really where it comes from. It's an old nautical term way before vending machines, but it's one of my favorite. Okay, so your next nautical term is one of my absolute favorite, probably my most favorite nautical term. It is the term scuttlebutt. So scuttlebutt has two meanings. It means water fountain, by the way, it was a pain trying to find one of these. I finally found one in the gym. They don't really have them on ships anymore, but the correct nautical term for this thing isn't water fountain, it's scuttlebutt. Another thing that scuttlebutt means is rumor. So back in the old days, sailors would be gathered around a barrel with water or rum in it. They drink and they talk about rumors, right? So scuttlebutt also means rumor. So use it in a sentence. I'm gonna go get a drink out of the scuttlebutt or like if you're on a cruise ship and you see maybe the crew starts serving you at the buffet, the scuttlebutt around the ship is probably gonna be that there's some sickness going around the ship. So that's the term, scuttlebutt. Hey, just a real quick break. If you don't mind, do me a little favor and give that like button a little tickle. Just give it a little tickle, it likes it, it'll giggle a little bit. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just broke 100,000 subscribers, so please join our travel cruise family here on this journey. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, we're gonna do some really basic nautical terms here. So this thing right here would not be called a wall. This would be called a bulkhead. Up here, that would be called an overhead, not a ceiling. And down here, this thing I'm laying on right now, this would not be called a floor. This would be called a deck. You know, that's why on the cruise ships, right? This is the Aloha deck, not the Aloha floor. And this really isn't a nautical term, but I think my friend Emma from Emma Cruises would not call this an elevator. Her Britishism would be that this is a lift. And then over here, this thing right here, that's not called a hallway, it's called a passageway. Okay, so your next nautical term is probably one you're already getting right. It's what you call your room. It's called a cabin. Sometimes on Navy ships, we call this a stateroom but cabin is a nautical term that most people use for the room you live in. There's probably some things inside the room you might not be getting right from a nautical term perspective. So let's come inside here and talk about a few of those. All right, so first up is this thing down here, right? You'd normally call this a bed. On a ship, this would be called a rack. So when you wake up in the morning, you'd make your rack, not make your bed. After you've been working all day, you're tired, you're ready to go to bed, you wouldn't say, I'm going to bed. You'd say, I'm gonna go hit my rack. All right, another room on here that most people get wrong. This one right over here, right? This is the, what is that called? It's not called a bathroom. Anything that has a toilet, shower, changing room, anything like that on a ship is called a head. So that's the head. All right, so I just made a huge mistake. No self-respecting sailor would call this thing a shower. They'd call it a rain locker. All right, we got one more thing in here, I think. Yeah. All right, so this thing right here, right? This round thing that looks out into the ocean. What would we call this? The nautical term for it would be porthole. 
Okay, so your next nautical term brings me down here to the deck. It's the term knee knockers. You're not gonna find a ton of knee knockers on cruise ships, but there's one I'm pretty sure you're aware of. It's usually inside your cabin, and it's the little raised area from your cabin deck to the deck of your head. You probably tripped over it in the beginning before you got used to it, but this would be considered a knee knocker. They're very common on Navy ships and merchant ships. It's basically a watertight door that you go through. There's a ton of them, and it's a raised area. Usually it's actually a little bit higher than this one here. It's usually a little bit under the knee. That's why they call it knee knockers. Usually you smack your shins into it, not your knees when you're going through the watertight doors. I'm sure if you go below, below the water line on a cruise ship, they probably have a bunch of knee knockers and watertight doors down there. But the ones you're gonna run into on a cruise ship as a passenger are the ones before you walk into your head in your cabin. Okay, so your next nautical term is the term ladder. So no sailor worth their salt would ever call this thing stairs. They'd never say I'm going up the stairs. They would say I'm headed up the ladder. So anytime you have stairs on a ship, it's called a ladder. Okay, your next set of nautical terms are associated with the area that you eat in. So a kitchen, it's not called a kitchen on a ship, it is called a galley. The place where you wash the dishes is called the scullery. And actually I know this is called a buffet or a dining room or something like that on board a cruise ship but on any other ship, this would be called a mess area, cruise mess, officer's mess, chief's mess. Another little cool nautical term I like that's not associated with cruise ships, but in the Navy, when you make chief, I was a master chief in the Navy, you eat in a place called the chief's mess. It's affectionately called the goat locker because it's a bunch of old dudes, a bunch of old goats. So they call it the goat locker. Oh, one more, one more thing. So the thing that you would use to mop the decks around the kitchen is not called a mop, it's called a swab. You wouldn't mop the floor, you'd swab the floor. And another term, swabby, is kind of a derogatory term to call a sailor, but a lot of people will call a sailor swabby. All right, I got a special treat for you. We're getting a beautiful sunrise here at the most forward part of the ship. So forward would be how you describe the front of the ship. Most of you would probably call this the bow area. You can't really see it here because this is the most forward I can come. But right here is the bridge, also called the pilot house sometimes by sailors. But let me teach you another word for this area up here. So back in the Columbus days of sailing, there used to be a tiny little castle on the front of the ship, the forward part of the ship. It was spelled forecastle, but sailors would call it the forecastle. Sailors would hide out in there and shoot arrows at invading ships. It would give them a little protection. There's no castle on the front of any ships anymore, but sailors still refer to this area as the forecastle. All right, so let's go to the aft part of the ship and talk about stuff back there. So a quick little pit stop here in the middle of the ship near where the pool is. So this area, as a sailor, you would refer to this as the midships area. So we're on a princess ship and they actually have a little nautical history in their logo. So their logo up there, that's not a princess. That's actually a sea witch, which is kind of a mermaid type of person. And sailors thought it was good luck. Okay, here we are at the back of the ship. So the correct nautical term for this area would be the aft portion of the ship, also called the stern. So this back here, that's called the wake but because we're at the stern of the ship, that's the stern wake. There's actually another wake that the ship makes. So on the, at the front of the ship, right, the bow, the forward part of the ship, that would be called the bow wake. So this area also has another name. So back in the day, after sailors got off watch or a long, hard day of work on ships, they'd go to the back of the ship, they'd put their feet over the side, they'd have a cigarette, and they'd talk about the latest scuttlebutt, right? You know what that means. They'd talk about the latest rumors. Well, they affectionately called this area the fantail. So if you really want to impress your friends, say, hey, I'm going back to the pool. And when they say, which pool are you going to? You can say, I'm going to the pool in the fantail or the fantail pool. All right, so this area actually has another name. Actually, any area like this where you're exposed to the weather, you call it the weather decks or you call it topside decks. So right now I'm topside, I'm not inside the skin of the ship. I'm exposed to the weather, weather decks, topside decks. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few more nautical terms that I love, but I can't really show you any area here on the ship. Every ship, I don't care if it's a cruise ship, a Navy ship, a merchant ship, has a jail on board. 
Sailors called the jail the brig. All right, here's another word that I just love. It's the term bamboozled. So today, bamboozled means to deceive kind of in a playful way, but back in sailors' days, it was a little bit more nefarious. So what bamboozle means is basically you hoist a flag that's not your own national origin or your country of origin for the ship. And that's to deceive other ships. A pirate ship would hoist up a Dutch flag so they could get closer to other ships, then they'd lower it and hurry up and hoist their pirate flag and then attack. And that was called by sailors as being bamboozled. So that's a fun word that comes from nautical tradition that I thought you would appreciate. And the final one that I wanna leave you with is a salutation. Sailors use this to wish other sailors farewell and good fortune. It's fair winds and following seas. So I wanna thank you for watching this video and wish you fair winds and following seas. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, we just hit 100,000 subscribers. Like I said, join our cruise family here for all this sailing adventure. Thanks for watching. See you next video.